from both ends. The chatter, the bustle, the noise died suddenly as the people in front spotted the hanging cat. Harry, Ron and Hermione stood alone in the middle of the corridor as silence fell among the mass of students pressing forward to see the grisly sight. Then someone shouted through the choir, Enemies of the air, beware! You'll be next, mudbloods! It was Draco Malfoy. He had pushed to the front of the crowd, his cold eyes alive, his usually bloodless face flushed as he grinned at the sight of the hanging, immobile cat. Chapter 9, The Writing on the Wall What's going on here? What's going on? Attracted, no doubt, by Malfoy's shout, Argus Filch came shouldering his way through the crowd. Then he saw Mrs. Norris and fell back, clutching his face in horror. My cat! My cat! What's happened to Mrs. Norris? He shrieked. And his popping eyes fell on Harry. You! He screeched. You! You've murdered my cat! You've killed her! I'll kill you! I'll... Argus! Dumbledore had arrived on the scene, followed by a number of other teachers. In seconds, he had swept past Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and detached Mrs. Norris from the torch bracket. Come with me, Argus, he said to Filch. You too, Mr. Potter, Mr. Weasley, Miss Granger. Lockhart stepped forward eagerly. My office is nearest, Headmaster, just upstairs. Please feel free. Thank you, Gilderoy, said Dumbledore. The silent crowd parted to let them pass. Lockhart, looking excited and important, hurried after Dumbledore. So did Professors McGonagall and Snape. As they entered Lockhart's darkened office, there was a flurry of movement across the walls. Harry saw several of the Lockharts in the pictures dodging out of sight, their hair in rollers. The real Lockhart lit the candles on his desk and stood back. Dumbledore lay Mrs. Norris on the polished surface and began to examine her. Harry, Ron and Hermione exchanged tense looks and sank into chairs outside the pool of candlelight, watching. The tip of Dumbledore's long, crooked nose was barely an inch from Mrs. Norris's fur. He was looking at her closely through his half-moon spectacles, his long fingers gently prodding and poking. Professor McGonagall was bent almost as close, her eyes narrowed. Snake moving behind them, half in shadow, wearing a most peculiar expression. It was as though he was trying hard not to smile. And Lockhart was hovering around all of them, making suggestions. It was definitely a curse that killed her, probably the transmogrifian torture. I've seen it used many times. So unlucky I wasn't there. I know the very counter-curse that would have saved her. Lockhart's comments were punctuated by Filch's dry, racking sobs. He was slumped in a chair by the desk, unable to look at Mrs. Norris, his face in his hands. Much as he detested Filch, Harry couldn't help feeling a bit sorry for him, though not nearly as sorry as he felt for himself. If Dumbledore believed Filch, he would be expelled for sure. Dumbledore was now muttering strange words under his breath and tapping Mrs. Norris with his wand, but nothing happened. She continued to look as though she had been recently stuck. I remember something very similar happening in Wagadougal, said Lockhart. A series of attacks. The full story is in my autobiography. I was able to provide the townsfolk with various amulets, which cleared the matter up at once. The photographs of Lockhart on the walls were all nodding in the green as he talked. One of them had forgotten to remove his helmet. At last, Dumbledore straightened up. She's not dead, Argus, he said softly. Lockhart stopped abruptly in the middle of counting the number of murders he had prevented. Not dead, choked Filch, looking through his fingers at Mrs. Norris. But why is she all, all stiff and frozen? She has been petrified, said Dumbledore. Ah, I thought so, said Lockhart. But how? I cannot see. Ask him, shrieked Filch, turning his blotched and tear-stained face to Harry. No second year would have done this, said Dumbledore firmly. It will 